this series of videos in the countdown to polling day December 12th concluding a detailed seats forecast for the Tories, Labour, Lib Dems and SNP. Analysis and forecast based on nine key lessons learned from 2017 general election that I covered in an earlier video whereas the opinion polls have consistently been wrong for now four UK elections in a row and thus should be ignored whilst the most accurate predictor of UK elections has consistently been my house prices based forecasts and average earnings growth. For this election the nine key lessons learned resolve into five pieces of in-depth analysis that aim to accurately forecast the outcome of the December 12th vote. Of which three pieces of analysis have already been completed including my UK house prices based core forecast that was first made available to patrons who support my work on the 24th of November 2019. So for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just $3 per month. If one looks back at the 2017 general election, then two things stand out where the manifestos of the two major parties were concerned. Firstly, Jeremy Corbyn promising to ramp up government spending by nearly 50 billion per year or about 2.8% of GDP to be funded by tax hikes of 50 billion on the top 5%. That included a Robin Hood tax on financial transactions where in reality Labour would have been lucky to get half the tax hike they were budgeting for and thus set to increase the deficit by 25 billion pounds per year. And where Brexit is concerned, Labour had ruled out a no deal Brexit. Then there's Theresa May's strong and stable government promised to get Brexit done, but no new voter bribes, just to continue to move towards raising the personal tax allowance to £12,500. A manifesto full of weak pledges with the underlying aim of balancing the budget by 2020 that translated into more economic austerity, hoping that the voters were too stupid to notice that they are getting nothing in exchange for the Tories wanting an increased majority, which included the disastrous social care policy for the elderly and what came to be known as the dementia tax that cost the Tories many seats. So the 2017, much like 2019, was supposed to be about Brexit, which on face value should have favoured the Tories, but that's not how things turned out. Instead, the contrasting manifestos of freebies versus more pain played a pivotal role in the Tories losing seats to Labour, which was not reflected in any of the opinion polls at the time, as it was deemed to be inconceivable that the Tories would actually lose seats on the 8th of June. So have the parties learned the lesson from 2017? Has Labour up the ante and have the Tories learned their lesson that the voters expect to be bribed at elections? Labour's Socialist Revolution Manifesto Labour under Jeremy Corbyn is literally promising the voters everything under the sun, scrapping universal credit, giving all public sector workers a 5% labour pay bribe, free personal care for the elderly, increasing the annual NHS spending by 30 billion per year, all of which translates into an increase in government day-to-day spending by 80 billion or by 10% per year, and additional investment spending of 55 billion a year for a total annual increase in spending of 135 billion more than two and a half times the tax bribes of 2017. So how does Labour propose to pay for all this spending? Well, they're going to tax the rich, corporations and the top 5% who already pay over 50% of the tax base are going to pay a whopping 83 billion extra in tax per year. What's going to happen if many of these corporations and individuals decide to migrate themselves and their operations abroad? which is much easier to do in our digital age. 
which means you can take Labour's plans for raising an extra 83 billion per year with a giant mountain of salt. At best, Labour will be able to reap a 30 billion increase in taxes, which is set against spending increase of 135 billion, resulting in a huge budget deficit soaring by as much as an additional 105 billion a year. That's on that's on par with the financial crisis when we had budget deficits of over 100 billion a year for a couple of years. What about the Tories? Well, they're promising to underspend again. The Tories are promising tax cuts in the form of raising national insurance threshold and a modest spending programme that totals some £7 billion, financed by scrapping plans to lower corporation tax from 19% to 17%, which is worth about £6 billion, so probably a net giveaway of around 2 to £3 billion. No one of the Tories continuously bang on about get Brexit done because despite the propaganda pumping extra money into the NHS and recruiting 20,000 more police officers and supposedly building 40 new hospitals where the actual number is 6. The Tories 2019 manifesto amounts to business as usual which is not going to go down well with the electorate who were repeatedly promised an end to austerity. Therefore, Boris Johnson, for whatever reason, is making a similar mistake to Theresa May by pinning too much on getting Brexit done slogan, which like 2017 is not going to carry as much weight as they expect it to do. Not even the gap between Labour and Tory manifestos that is even wider today than 2017. 105 billion of net Labour deficit spending worth about two to three billion of Tory deficit spending. Now the rest of this analysis has first been made available to patrons who support my work. So for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just $3 per month. And also remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel for the next video in this series as we count down to the 12th December general election.